Hi, quick message before the beginning of the video. A couple videos back I did my 10 year anniversary video and I offered up 10 uh, care packages of some trivial items that I was going to send out. Uh, six of you, I've sent your packages out. Uh, they went out in the mail today. Four of you, I replied to your comment. I, you were instructed to comment on the video to say that you want one. I replied to your comment requesting that you email me your address. Four of you haven't gotten your address. So if you still want it, please email me your address. Uh, you should be able to see a notification that I replied to your comment or just go back to your comment on the video and you'll see that. Um, and uh, if you don't want it, let me know and I'll send it to the next four people or however many there are. But uh, anyway, the first six of you, though, it's on its way now. So thanks very much. And uh, now on to this video. Hello, sewing people of the internet. This is going to be a pretty quick video, I hope. Um, this is sort of part of the evaluation, the ongoing review and evaluation of this Singer Heavy Duty sewing machine. Uh, this just kind of came up, so I thought I'd take the opportunity. A piece of webbing on my hip pack that I made a few years ago came loose. It just came out of the seam. It was sewn into the seam mostly for appearance and rather than take the whole thing apart I'm just gonna fold it under and bar tack it down just so it's not flopping around. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to use the Singer HD to do a zigzag stitch or make a bar tack on some 17337 webbing over a couple of layers of 400D nylon pack cloth. Before I sew it, I'm going to show you uh, kind of a bonus tip. I don't want this webbing to fray. The old school method has always been to melt it with a lighter or a flame or cut it with a hot knife, and that helps quite a bit, but in my experience, it seems like eventually it's going to fray anyway, and I don't want to do a double fold on this, mostly because I just don't want to have that or lose that much of the length for that loop. So. I recently tried this on a different project and it worked pretty well. This is not something I've done very long term testing on and I found this glue gun and the glue sticks that went with it in my father-in-law's shop and I don't have any idea of the specifications of any of it so your mileage may vary. But I have found if you seal webbing with hot melt glue it does seem to keep it from fraying for an extended period of time. I have some V69 thread in this machine and it has one of the needles that came with it which is a size 100 needle I believe. I'm not going to bother changing to a different thread color to match this because this is purely a functional repair. So we'll start with a straight stitch. And then I'll change to a zigzag. Go to like a three on the width and go to a pretty short stitch length and we'll back up over that same stitch line. So I've been, I think, pretty clear in this series of videos, and if this is the first one you've watched, you won't know, I guess, but I've been pretty clear that I don't expect to like this machine, and I have a lot of skepticism about its claims of being a heavy-duty machine, but that's actually one of the nicer bar tacks I've done, or seen done by any of my machines. There's a loop here at the Let's see, is that where I started? Yeah, at the beginning of, I don't know if that's, I don't know, may have just caught the tail from uh, where I started. But, yeah, that's quite nice looking. Seemed to handle that just fine. Now, I don't want it to seem like I'm gushing with uh, adoration for this machine. The fact that it did that is nice. Uh, that 
shouldn't have been too taxing for pretty much any domestic machine. The tension is maxed out on the machine. I noticed the previous time I sewed 400D pack cloth on it, I had to crank the tension all the way up, which may or may not be a knock on the machine, but I still have a lot more testing and evaluation to do before I'm comfortable rendering any kind of an opinion on the heavy duty nature of this machine. But one of the questions I've had is, does this machine even work at all? And this is, Evidence to suggest that it does, that it is useful for, you know, making or repairing projects out of the kinds of materials that I tend to use. Anyway, I just wanted to share that quick repair with this machine with you. If you're interested in what I eventually learn about this machine, make sure you subscribe and click the bell notification so that you see all the new videos that come out about this. I'll be doing a lot of videos on this machine in the coming months. If you have questions or comments, post them in the comments section below, and there's a bunch of information in the description with various links that you can check out. Thanks for watching. Yeah, got something. A well, surprise, surprise. A mine cichlid. Nice one. Thanks, buddy.